Hi everyone across our Christian Family Centre churches. Uh, today is our annual progress meeting where your lead pastors will be sharing on the spiritual progress and the financial progress of our churches for 2020 and for the first six months of 2021. You know it's 46 years since the Christian Family Centre was birthed. I've been in the role of senior minister now for 43 years. Can you believe it? I still feel like I'm in my 30s. But uh, it's a joy to visit you, uh, minister the word to you, uh, get to know you, but particularly my main connection is with your lead pastors and their leadership teams, and they are fabulous people, fabulous teams. I commend them to you. Collectively, we do some amazing things. For example, our world missions giving. Every church gives uh, outside of itself to meet needs overseas, particularly through our CRC uh, World Missions Focus. Last year, 2020, we gave uh, a total amount of $214,000 uh, to overseas. That's a wonderful thing. The other thing that we do is collectively, 10% of our income is marked out for 3% to our CRC Churches International Movement as part of belonging, our levy, and another 7% goes into our Christian Family Centre Churches Fund where we help to pioneer churches. In starting the Darwin Church and CFC South over the past three years, it was out of this fund that we're able to plant the churches. And so you have been involved in church planting. Also, we support churches like uh, Alice Springs particularly. We support uh, Pastor Ben Matson uh, to help cover some of his salary out of that fund. And so thank you for your generosity, for your giving, your weekly tithing, your, your monthly missions giving, your own facilities development giving, and, and of course to special projects like putting the new building up in Alice Springs, which is our goal for this year. Do you know the home mission support uh, that we have initiated this year for Alice Springs? We have now reached $268,409 that we can use to put up stage one of the facilities. Uh, we are so thankful that we've been able to raise uh, this amount of money. A hundred thousand of that came from the Northern Territory Government as a grant, but the rest of it came from you, from our churches, and, and some gifts have been anonymous. So we're really thrilled with that, that we can work together to establish bases, operational bases for further outreach. The Alice Springs facility is going to reach thousands of people in Alice and in the whole of Central Australia. And so uh, they're just examples of us working together. Finally, uh, I commend to you our uh, Board of Elders, Directors who oversee everything in our governance role. The lead pastors and their leadership teams are directly involved in the leadership and ministry of our churches. The Board of Elders, Directors are in the governance role and we have certain responsibilities. And then we have an advisory council. If ever we had a need of advice and help uh, intervention, we're accountable to them. And so I commend them all to you. They are men and women of the highest integrity. Some I have known for five decades now and have been working with them at a board level and leadership level for 40, 30, 20 years. And so you may not know them, uh, but I know them well, have absolute confidence in them. It's a bit like our Prime Minister and our Premiers. We don't know them personally, but we, we have confidence in them if they're accountable and if they're consistent and sackable and all of that stuff. And so our, our leadership teams, our boards are fully accountable, fully transparent. And as we've uh, tabled with you, our audited financial statements, they're done by a non-member outside the church, every sense accounted for. And so we believe in good governance and in full transparency and accountability. And so I commend you, have a great day, a great service and rejoice with the positive reports by your lead pastors. Take care. Uh, that was my report to all of our Christian Family Centre churches, so they've been watching that now and this afternoon, tonight, and so that's in my role as a senior minister of the churches that we've been able to plant uh, from this base here, when we're very thankful to God that uh, we haven't just been developing and growing one massive church. Uh, our church here is about 800 and 40, 50 people or so, but we've been able to plant churches from all the way, Darwin to Hobart, and we're really thankful for that. And they're doing their annual progress report now. And so um, now I'll put my hat on as the lead pastor here 
and share with you just some of the, the positive things that have been taking place um, over the past uh, 12 months. This is for 2020. Now, we sent to you uh, the audited financial statements of the church um, two or three weeks beforehand so you can read, ask any questions. And uh, for those of you who are visiting with us today, we do this once a year. Um, I'll still minister the word a bit later, but um, our auditors are not members or part of the Christian Family Centre. They're in fact not even a Christian group. And uh, so just for objectivity and making sure that you're fully accountable to them. And under Australian law, the auditors have enormous power to actually say, we're well, not doing this right, etc. So, uh, So these are given out and anyone can ask any questions about anything that takes place uh, in the financial life of the church. So thank you for receiving this. And our board of directors uh, and, uh, basically accepted this a couple of weeks ago. Let me give you just a few slides, if you can see through me, for those of you in front of me. Um, our CFC Church's accounts team, Milan Tompich, who's part of our leadership team here at the church, oversees the accounts department. Um, we have Emma Lumberg, who's a fully qualified accountant, Lorraine Hardwick, May Kirkland, and this team handles millions of dollars coming in and out, basically, and oversee the whole thing. Um, May also does some work in my role as National Chairman of CRC Churches and Pastor Nathan, who was on our um, keyboard today, he's the General Administrator, so she works in overseeing our denominational financial affairs. Hey, look, our weekly tithes income here at Seton, have a look at this figure, from 2018, around $13,000, uh, $13,500, through to now about 15, just over $15,000 uh, a week and you see the increase that's occurred, little drop in the first six months of this year, or first five months, and we trust that'll go back up in the second half of the year. Uh, we think maybe um, a JobKeeper last year during the COVID crisis may have kind of had a, a positive effect upon the, the, the giving of the church, and with that being eliminated by the federal government, and rightly so, it's probably found a, its own level. Uh, all the giving in relation to 2020, folks, you give around $20,000, $20,600 a week in through here, whether it's your weekly tithes, missions giving, monthly missions, facilities development. Most of it comes through your on, online giving, about 97%, and, uh, and again, COVID has, has forced us to make sure that we do it that way, though there are boxes in the foyer where people can make contributions. These are free will offerings, it's not a condition of membership or belonging, and I'm very thankful to you uh, for your generosity. Our value as a church here for your interest, uh, hey, we bought this land for $83,000. Can you believe it? It was a miracle property, a ah, miracle property. And uh, in those days, you could work with the state government and, and have meetings with the premiers and ask them to give us land, and, and, uh, and basically we did that. And we just stepped out as a little church and said, I gave them a vision. I, I painted a picture, actually. This is an important principle of vision casting. I painted a picture of what we are now, but we're only about 100 people. And I said, this is what our vision is for the western suburbs and not knowing it was going to be for the whole of, of uh, Adelaide and beyond. And they believed us. And they interviewed us and, and said, and, and we had to sign an encumbrance that we weren't a bunch of crooks, that we would kind of sell the property and make a profit and all that stuff. And so we're very thankful for uh, our state government helping us to acquire this land for 83,000 bucks. It's probably estimated now at $12 million. Uh, the buildings are insured for 13 million. Uh, so we think our, our value is around $25 million. So equity wise, asset wise, is uh, the church here is doing very well. And if you combine Hobart, which is a 60-acre property, and now with Alice Springs, that, that equity's gone up further. Hey, here's a little one that uh, I like to, because this is a pet project that Milan Tompich, our, our general administrator, got into. He, he didn't like the idea that we're paying $46,000 a year in electricity costs back in 2013. So we went solar, okay? We're green through and through, not politically, but environmentally. <laughs> Better cover that one. <laughs> uh, now that I'll get into trouble. Um, and so we got the jolly solar panels and I don't know, government gave us some support like they gave us with water tanks, you know. And so we've got that down to $12,000 a year. How's that? And the loan that we took out, we've paid off. That's fantastic. And the other thing is, a bigger clap in a couple of years time, when the technology for batteries come in, we will be basically electricity neutral. 
So they're not quite there yet. So that, that's a pretty amazing thing. So again, uh, we're, we're re- we rejoice over that. Hey, look, our loan repayment summary, uh, 2018-19, you see our, our loans were about half a million dollars. We've got that down to $268,000 as of now. And, uh, and of course, the interest rate's being dropped at 2.4%. So our, our, our indebtedness went up a little bit, though they say, hey, look, compared to your equity, your, your debt situation is not, not a huge amount. But we had a lot of things happening, like air conditioning busted and we had to get a new system. And uh, the car park, the council said, you've got to finish it off, otherwise we'll close you down, like a quarter of a million dollars later. And so we had to do it. And we took up some offerings, but they were short, so we just kept on increasing the, the debt to cover those things. So we felt, you know what, we just got to try and deal with this. And so thank you for your generosity in helping cover that. Um, our perpetuity fund is one that we started a couple of years ago, a few years ago now, about $47,000 in there. Now look, this is a, a fund that we've created for the long term. I've been here 43 years, and I'm hopeful that when it comes my time to, to move on and there's a new lead pastor, new senior minister of our churches, that we might have, say, between five and $10 million in this perpetuity fund. And so a lot of us have been here for a long time. We've put the church in our wills. So Kath and myself, for example, our will, is we've got uh, five lots, got four kids, and the fifth kid is the Christian Family Center. Um, and so we've divided up and said, okay, when we go and be with the Lord, and we're not planning that anytime soon, um, that it goes to the church and so that the board can use that finance, not only the interest on that. So the, for example, the, the first bequest that came in was from, from uh, oh, come on, anyway. Roz, Roz Hurley, that's right, yeah, Roz. What did I say, Imi, oh, Hurley, okay, that's a prof- prophecy for the Hurleys, okay. So, uh, so she put this in, you know, like, uh, so what we're saying is, look, consider the church. Now for me, as a Greek man, I've looked after my kids. My four kids are in my will. My nine grandchildren, two to come, uh, are in my will. They get a thousand bucks a year. Can you believe it? I put a thousand, I thought they would do one or two kids, a thousand bucks a year into an account for each child. I've got seven, I'm gonna have nine, they're gonna break me. So the, ki- the kids are not gonna get anything, the grandkids are gonna get it all. But, but seriously, we've just said, look, we wanna bless, so, so you know, this is our Greek tradition, we wanna bless our grandkids, we bless our children, and, and uh, the only thing I've said to my grandkids is, is you gotta buy land, that's the Greek way. Not the God way, the Greek way. <laughs> buy land or a thing, when you turn 18, 19, you can use it. So look, I believe you gotta look after your family and look after your children, but don't forget Jesus. So we're not saying, hey, look, in your will, put everything to the church. No, no, I I think that if someone did that, I'd say, I'd question it, I'd make sure that that would go and see their families and all that kind of stuff. I think you've got to look after your family, your grandkids, but don't, but consider Jesus and the long term. So we're putting in 20% of our estate into the church, into perpetuity fund, and we're hopeful that that will be able to earn a lot of money that we can use in emergencies, for example, uh, you know, like we have hurricanes or tornadoes, cyclones hit our mission areas. You know, there's $20,000, $30,000, $50,000 things that, and you think, where are we gonna find the money? We're not, we don't plan for that, even as a denomination. So wouldn't it be great, out of the 10 million bucks that's in there, we could just cut a check and say, here's Solomon Islands, here's 30,000 bucks, get those buildings fixed, without having to go to another fundraising thing. So we're just thinking it's smart, and, uh, and it sets up the church for the years ahead. So that's a perpetuity fund. Guys, what we've produced many years ago for the CRC is uh, how to do your will and all about bequests. So this is a CRC document. We've got a statement in there about the Christian Family Centre. If you haven't done a will, you need to because you don't want the government to get it all. You've got to look after your family and kids. So even when you're married, you've got to make sure you have a will. And so it tells you that, how to do it, and also... Uh, if you want to put the church in your will, then let us know, particularly Milan Toppinch, and we can give you some guidance on that. So this booklet is in the foyer there. You can take it and consider it. So uh, that's our perpetuity fund that we've, we've set up. Hey, Christian Family Centre Churches, I mentioned this on, on the, uh, the video, uh, 10% of our income of all our churches goes to 3% to our denominational family to fund our movement. We have 137 churches in Australia and probably another 800 or 900 across the world. And uh, so that, have, that all started from Adelaide. 
1945. Can you believe it's an amazing movement? And it's been my privilege to lead the movement for the past nearly 20 years. So, but 7% goes into our Christian families and a church's fund. For example, when we started the church in, in Darwin, the, the professor from the university and the high school teacher who, who we knew said, we want to start a Zoom church. Four people turned up. Six the next week, I think Jill Steele was part of it. I preached, I think, and there were eight people there. There's around 60 or so people now. They have a leased property. That finance came out of this fund. And so though John and Sue have put in their own funds, we support them. Uh, CFC South, uh, Tim, when Tim and Nikki went down south, Renella, to plant the church, Tim stayed on salary here out of Seton, but all the costs of setting up, hiring and PAs, all that stuff went uh, came out of that fund. And so other churches, and we support uh, other churches as well within, it, within that. So you can see that in 2020, $96,000 came in. Uh, from here, it was around $57,000. So, so we are directly involved in church planting, even though you may not have been to the new churches as I visit them uh, on a yearly basis. Our world mission support, I mentioned this, uh, 2020, $151,000 came in from here. And you've got to believe the needs that it has met. For example, when we found out that in Papua New Guinea, our mother church there in Papua New Guinea, when they closed down, they had no finance provision electronically. And so the funds for 50 people they support in missionary work, either missionaries that have gone out or people they support in the nations. Because from Bethel Center, we've gone from the Philippines right through to Sri Lanka. And so they ran out of money, they never asked for it. What we have done is we, we gave a significant amount last year and we've made a commitment this year to put in $15,000. So that's something that, that we're doing. And so I'm really thrilled with that, that we're able to consider the poor and the needy and the countries that we're supporting, whether it's, it's, it's uh, feeding programs, education, church planting, training. So uh, if we forget the poor, we're not really followers of Jesus, I think. If we forget the needy, and we must, in this fabulously wealthy country that we live in, not just consider our own needs, but also the needs of others. So I'm really thankful for our world mission support. Our home mission support, how's this one? We took up, again, over and above our normal tithes missions giving, you raised $113,000 in the first few months of this year to put up this new facility in, in, in Alice Springs. Our other CFC churches have put in 26,000. Mr. Anonymous has come through with about $28,000. We don't know who he is, we'd like to know who he is or she is, and, uh, but the, the, to just keep putting in money. Another 10,000 bucks came in the other week. And I said to them, find out who this person is. I'd like to shake their hand, but they want to be anonymous. So they could be from here, could be from our CFC churches, it could be from a CRC church, or it could be from a Uniting church, it could be a Baptist church, we don't know. And of course, the Northern Territory government, bless them, gave us $100,000, isn't that good? And for stage two, we're looking and asking them for a quarter of a million dollars. So we're just going up on that one. So that's, uh, so we hope to start this in the next few months, uh, and of course, Milan Tompich and Cobus Pinia, who's our architect, uh, Cobus is doing it all free of charge. What he's doing would cost many thousands of dollars. So we're very thankful for that and our direct involvement in it. Hey, look, uh, finally, our facilities upgrade. Um, we, uh, in some respects, you know, you've got to balance everything. It's like these buildings are fantastic that God has provided for us, but big buildings, big headaches. And uh, you know, big church, more responsibility. But so you can let go sometimes your house and think, oh, well, I'll paint it next time and I'll do a little bit of extra work. And then when you wait another five years, it costs you twice as much. Well, that's what we did here. We did very little in this place, in upkeep. We put our money into church planting, into world missions, as you can see. But we have felt we've really needed to upgrade our facilities. And the auditorium's turn came up uh, two years ago. And 218 individuals and couples have committed uh, uh, $402,000 to cover the cost of those things. What we've done so far is the new lighting system came in, stage lighting, stage structure, display screen, painting, jib rocking, a whole pile of stuff. Uh, you see uh, what, what it's cost us and the debt reduction. Uh, in that, we've also built a debt reduction strategy. The next 12 months before the, this campaign finishes is to actually get the new speakers into this auditorium. You will notice today these things here. Yes, I Did you notice them? Yes. This, we're just trialling out these things for downstairs. Upstairs, I'm sorry, guys, you still not, may not hear it properly. I don't know how you've been, 
but uh, they're, they're gearing her for downstairs and they'll do three more up top to cover the whole thing. So they're aiming, so our speakers have been 1993 and they were second hand, just shows you, like our air conditioning was second hand. So, you know, and, and look, God's been good, you know, we, it, it worked for a while, but um, so the speakers, are, uh, have caused us a few difficulties, like some people can't hear, some people can hear too loudly, uh, some places are dead, and, and so we've needed to do this, and particularly because this is now the premier place for hiring by schools and community groups in the western suburbs of Adelaide. There's nothing like this facility here, the community hall, the other places, and so we've had maybe up to 30,000 kids and schools that come through here. And so with this new screen and new audio, it's gonna be and, and, it, and, and so we're very thankful for that, that it's a community centre and uh, people can come and use it. They're just not allowed to have alcohol and stuff like that on, on site, so we don't get a lot of weddings, obviously. And, uh, but for schools, at a ver varying price, they can hire the facility and we're very thankful for that. So we need to do this. So church, uh, as I mentioned in my letter a couple of weeks ago, um, there is this booklet that's available in the foyer that explains, we call it the hear the sound, see the vision, and an opportunity for you to actually put in a commitment next Sunday. And we're saying if, if you're part of the church and you're new, and you're saying, look, I'd like to be a part of this, we're not saying three years. Some of us have been doing it, for th this will be our third year. Just for 12 months, you wanna make a commitment, a certain amount as God leads you. Don't rob Peter to pay Paul, don't take it out of tithes or missions giving or Alice Springs giving and you pray and God lead you and next Sunday we'll take up that offering. And for some of us, we're gonna just make a, a special contribution to, to, to kickstart this because we want the finance to come in before we get the speakers. Otherwise, we go into debt again and we don't want that. So it may take us 12 months and so we're just doing a bit of experiment uh, on that one. So um, that's my report. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Loving Father, thank you for the opportunity to share a good report on what you're doing in and through the life of the Christian Family Centre. And Lord, I just count it a privilege to be in this role of uh, leading this church and our group of churches, as well as our movement, and I, I'm just honoured uh, by this privilege, and I'm so thankful for your people, good people, excellent people, spiritual people, generous people, who support the vision and who partner with us and that, Lord, we can be accountable to them. And I thank you for every person who's here for our 8.30 service, for tonight at 5.30 and for Friday morning as we met with them. Thank you for their generosity, their faithfulness, their, their prayers, their, their, their serving you. Thank you, Lord, that we're working together to accomplish great purposes for Jesus. So I pray, Lord, Bless this local church. Bless all of our churches as they're meeting and reporting today. And Lord, I pray, let there be a manifold blessing on all those who have been financial supporters over many years. And, and for those who, who are wanting to join this team and become partners, speak to them, Lord. If this is their church home they're, and they're being inspired to want to commence tithing and mission giving and facility support, all that stuff, guide them and lead them, we pray. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.